Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. Today we're making my version of Munster. Now, this is the traditional French recipe and not the American recipe. Um, I, in my research, I found that there are two versions of this cheese. One is a uh, square, sorry, rectangle sized brick, and the other one is um, a circular version. Now, I'm using some, uh, some camembert molds, and we'll see how that works out um, as we progress through the cheese. Anyway, on with the cheese. Well, the real name for this cheese is Petit Munster Jérôme. So here's the ingredients list. Eight litres of full cream cow's milk, quarter teaspoon of mesophilic culture, eighth of a teaspoon of Brevibacterium linens, 2.5 mil or half a teaspoon of calcium chloride in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, 2.5 ml or half a teaspoon of liquid rennet in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, some cheese salt and some brine for washing the rind as this is a washed rind cheese. Now bring your target temperature up to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit and then sprinkle over your mesophilic culture. Now I actually had to use two packets of, I'm using a Mad Millie mesophilic here, uh, which is uh, one eighth of a teaspoon in each sachet. So I poured both of those. I had some uh, just out of uh, just out of best before date um, culture, so I sprinkled those over the top. And then I'm going to put in the brevi bacterium linens. Just sprinkle that over the top as well. This is the culture that makes the orange rind and it actually softens the cheese as it ripens. Okay, now you allow the cultures to rehydrate on the top of the milk there for five minutes. And then once that's elapsed, then just give it a good stir top to bottom. And once you've stirred it through, add in your calcium chloride. Give that a good stir as well. And then add in your rennet. So as you can see, there's no ripening period between adding the cultures and then adding the other ingredients. So I took it off the heat because it was getting a bit too warm. It was starting to go above the target temperature. Now I'm going to let that uh, set now. Put the lid back on, make sure there's no dust or fluff gets in there. So after about 50 minutes, mine took about 55 minutes to uh, to get a clean break. Just be careful that you don't stir before you get a clean break, otherwise all your curds go sloppy. So just put the knife in. Yeah, we get a nice clean break there. And then we're just uh, cutting the horizontals. So it's one point. 25 centimeters or half inch cubes. Just finish that off with my curd knife. Curd knife's nothing special. This is just a long, sharp knife that I've got in my uh, my knife rack. So there we go. We're now going to allow the curds to heal now before we stir them. So just five minutes is all it takes. So once that's done, we're going to give this a little bit of a stir very gently, just for five minutes. So that is, that is sped up, but it's actually gently. So just five minutes is all it takes. You're just trying to let a little bit more of the way out I'm just checking the target temperature yet we're still at 32 so as you can see nothing's broken up the cubes are still there now we're going to put the lid back on and let that settle for 30 minutes so all of the uh, the curd is sunk to the bottom of the way is now at the top just put my finger in there to test the level i'm just going to take that over to the sink now now I've got a colander lined with a cheesecloth and then we're just going to pour 
the contents through that. It's quite a delicate uh, curd, so just be careful that you don't drop it from a great height. Try and get as close to that as you can. I'm going to let that drain for 10 minutes. So it shrunk a little bit. Now I'm using four camembert moulds. These are 10 centimetre across. So we're just going to ladle that in. I'm using a skimmer there, but the, it works equally as well. You can just cut off slices of it and then put it into the uh, into the moulds. Now I did have another one ready to go if I had too much, but uh, I decided against it and decided to continue on with the four small the camembert moulds. So just top those up. Now this may take a few hours. Now it will all fit, as you can see, even though I've piled it up on top, it will shrink down and uh, form the cheese that we're after. So as you can see there, that's after a few hours, four hours, and uh, they have shrunk down to the level. Now just gently take them out of the mold then pop them back in, we're just turning them. We want them to get an even um, rind. You're going to get the rind to form. We don't want those lumpy bits on top, so I'm just turning those over in the hoop. It's easier this way because the bottom of these moulds um, is flat, so it's, they're not a hoop. So they actually form the cheese a lot better. So as each four hour passes, you can easily turn them. No problems at all. So you're going to turn it three times over 12 hours, basically, to help them uh, reduce in size. And as I said, to get the surface of the cheese nice and smooth. You see they're shrinking down as we proceed through. Yes, there we are. Okay, so this is the next morning. Um, about 36 hours I let these drain for to get the size I wanted. Now you just put those into your um, ripening box and then sprinkle a quarter of a teaspoon of salt over the top. Give it a bit of a rub, turn them over, give them another sprinkle. So they're going to absorb all the salt there. Now we're going to ripen this at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit at 85 degrees, oh sorry, 85% humidity. Now for the first three days we're going to turn them daily and we're going to clean any excess whey out of the ripening container. I'm just using some paper towel there to dry it all off. Just uh, want to keep the humidity down a little bit. That's why we're drying it off. Just make sure they're turned. Remember this is only for the first three days. Okay, just wipe the lid off as well. So after the three days has elapsed, we start washing it with a brine solution every two days. And this is essential to bring out the orange bloom. And you'll see I'm using a little bit of brine there and a lint-free cloth, and just wiping them all over. Now after two weeks, you'll get an orange smear. So continue to wash that every two days for at least two weeks before you eat them. Three weeks is better. It's a very mild cheese then. Now if you want the authentic Munster flavour or Petit Munster Jerome, then uh, wash them for up to 10 weeks, then you get the full flavour. Well there you have it, we have my little Monsters, or better known as Munster. This version that I made here is better known in the region as Munster Petit, um, so small Munsters. Um, and uh, they are starting to turn orange now, and this is after about 10 days. They will go even further orange as they start to ripen with the Brevi bacterium linens, uh, and uh, I'll take some midweek footage and we can see how that's going along before Christmas. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget you can subscribe to the channel, and that if you want to support the channel, you can do so via Patreon just here. There's another cheese, my little bears, you can check the video out right here. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and we'll see you next time.